question is, has two parts. Has eternal life to live in heaven? When our bodies are old and we die and worn out, we get a new life here on earth also, right? Life becomes peaceful. We have guidance, love, understanding, and support from our brothers and sisters at the church. Most of you know that I love the Old Testament and relating that to the New Testament to show you how it all works together. And the Old Testament is important. We must have the Old Testament and you must study it and know it. I've explained that many times because there's many prophecies that happened and it's very beautiful to understand and to read and connect all that together. So this morning, while we're reading and studying, I want you to try to recognize how the scripture ties together from the Old Testament with the New Testament. I want you to be thinking about it and open your heart and mind, okay, to try to figure out how the Old Testament ties to the New Testament part. So look at in Numbers, chapter 21, verses 4 through 9. Verse 4 says, they were coming out of Egypt, okay? So they traveled from Mount Hor along the route to the Red Sea to go around Edom. But the people grew impatient on the way. So Moses did not want to go through the town of Edom because he didn't want to fight with those people. Plus, God's plan was for them to go around for the people's sake. If they went around, the travel would be longer and harder and more challenging. So I want you to picture the people left slavery for 40 years, and they're tired. And they're worn out. They're frustrated. They're scared. They don't know what the future looks like. And so it's causing them to not think right. They did not think, we're not thinking right at all. They did not, you know, live to follow and have faith in God. They were worn out and they started crying and whining, complaining. Does this sound familiar? I'm leading you now to my second point. I want to see if it sounds familiar. We feel discouraged. And we cry and complain, right? When we're tired, we cry and complain. When we don't get what we want, we cry and complain. If something is not taste right or look right or feel perfect, we will whine and complain. So your reaction to a situation will reflect your character. Have you heard that? That's painful to hear, right? We have several stories about how your reaction to a specific situation can show your true character. And I hate it. I hate it when my life, my personality, and I'm just going along, thinking, wow, praise God. Oh, thanks for recognizing me today. And, oh, I'm just doing so good. And my faith is so strong. I have good behavior. You know, I just feel like everything is just going right. And I want you to notice me, look at me. And then God puts a challenge in my life. And bam, I change. I just change. I'm a different person. I don't even know who that person is. I change. And the real you comes out of your body. And sometimes we surprise ourselves because the real you is very aggressive, very, you know, use bad language, very violent. I mean, who are we? When God puts a challenge in front of us, or if Satan puts a challenge in front of us, the real person comes out. So that's what we need to work on. Yes. We need to work on that every day. 
We need to work on being patient, kind, compassionate, loving every day. And it's a challenge for you and a challenge for me. At a time when God puts things in our lives, or if Satan puts something in your life as a stumbling block, we have to continue to be patient and kind and compassionate and loving. And that's a challenge for us. It's not easy. But we need to set a Christian example. Like Jesus Christ, we need to have, you know, think about Jesus Christ. He was hungry, he was thirsty, he had been beaten, he was tired, he felt awful. And then next, they nailed him to the cross while he was hungry and thirsty and feeling awful. He was nailed to the cross. But Jesus continued. It's in Scripture. There's Scripture for us to follow. It is possible for us to behave correctly no matter what comes up in our life. Jesus was kind to the soldiers. The soldier who was nailing him to the cross, Jesus was still kind and compassionate and merciful to the soldier. Jesus had, he was merciful and kind to the soldiers who were making fun of him, who were gambling, trying to get his clothes. Jesus was kind and compassionate and merciful and nice to the thieves on the cross. They invited him to go to heaven with him. Jesus even asked the Father to forgive all the people for their mistakes while he was in horrible pain nailed to the cross. I want to be able to do just a little bit of that. Doesn't matter what happens in my life, or what kind of challenges come up, or what situation comes up, I still want to be kind and loving and patient and merciful and compassionate. Still, I want that. Because that is Christ-like. Remember when people left Egypt? They were in slavery for 40 years. They had suffered every single day. But they lived, you know, many died, many were beaten. It was awful. It was an awful life. And now they've left but they don't know what the future holds. And they feel like it's going to be the same way. We don't, we're, or we're the same way. We don't know what our future holds. And we become afraid. Because problems continue to pop up in our life. And it's scary for us. That's true. But I want you to watch and see what's next. Verse 5. The people, they're hungry, they're thirsty. Okay, they're scared. So it says, They spoke against God and against Moses and said, Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? There is no bread, there is no water, and we detest this miserable food. So they're talking against God and against Moses. So at that time was the eighth time that they complained that was the eighth time that they did that. And they did complain about the manna. You know, before, over and over and over, people complained about the manna. But really, manna, science has found that manna is very healthy. And it's delicious, sweet, has a sweet flavor. And that the manna has all the vitamins it needs in it. You know, it kept people healthy. And it was good for them. But they complained because... What's behind that really was they were scared, right? I mean, people today complain about steak. Send it back. It's not right. I paid good money for this. I want a good steak. I mean, people complain about worship. Sometimes we can make mistakes. It's possible after church someone will complain that we made too many mistakes today. Or maybe someone will complain that, you know, they didn't like the way it looks in here. It's not pretty enough. Or they'll complain about our pews, that they're too hard. But maybe the same day, 
I will find out that that person was there for hours and hours and hours sitting at a baseball game on a very hard seat. People complain and complain and whine and cry because, or they, when they should be thanking them. I mean, we already have many things, and God, um, they think God's not listening anymore. Now, verses 6 and 7. Verse 6 and 7 says, Then the Lord sent venomous snakes among them. They bit the people, and many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We sinned when we spoke against the Lord and against you. Pray that the Lord will take the snakes away from us. So Moses prayed for the people. So now these people realize, oops, I was complaining, I was mad, I was talking against God, and God's mad, and he sent all these snakes into the camp. So now they're sorry. But they would not say sorry if God did not send the snakes, right? If God didn't send the snakes, they would continue complaining and whining and crying. And, but they had a consequence. And so now they're sorry. So it would be nice if we would always do the right things, not because we're going to get a consequence, but we would always do the right things because that's the right thing to do. Wouldn't that be nice? It would be automatic. We would want to do the right things because doing the right thing is the right thing to do. Right? Is that right? Yep. But... We don't. Our natural instinct is to complain and to whine and cry. And so I want you to think about this. What would happen in your life if you can make you, I mean, what, what has to happen to make you do the right thing again? I want you to think about that. So let's look at verses 8 and 9. The Lord said to Moses, make a snake and put it on a pole. Anyone who is bitten can look at it and live. So Moses made a bronze snake and put it up on a pole. Then, when anyone was bitten by a snake and looked at the bronze snake, they lived. There's a picture. Does that make you think of something in the New Testament? It's very important that my point is not only, you know, that we cry and complain and whine. We know that we do that. We know it. I don't have to teach or preach about that because we do that. It doesn't matter, you know, what kind of blessings are poured out on you. We'll still cry and complain, right? We forget to be thankful. 364 days after Thanksgiving, right? Right? True. Yes. I'm guilty. We're all guilty. So here in the New Testament part, this how this ties together. If people are bitten from the snake, they're supposed to look at the bronze snake. They're supposed to look with faith. They look and they believe that that will save me, they will be saved. If they don't believe, I'm sure some are like, I'm not looking at that bronze snake. I need something better. I need a better idea than just looking at that bronze snake. That's silly. If they have faith to look at the bronze snake, then they will live. 
Now compared to the New Testament, there's a beautiful verse in John chapter 3, verse 14 through 16. Most of you have memorized John 3, 16, but 14 and 15 are very important. And it says, Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. So say this with me. Say verse 16 with me, okay? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Isn't that cool? We've memorized that verse. So 14 and 15 are also important. It's the same as the Old Testament. You know, people were to look and believe they would live. They would be saved. God would protect them and take care of them. And it's the same in the New Testament. Jesus is now to the cross. And on the cross, we are to focus on Jesus Christ with faith. And Jesus replaced, or he saved Barabbas. And they said, you know, he needed to be crucified and to be sent to the cross. And Jesus replaced the sins for you and me. And he did that because he loves us. But God's love was not enough, so he had to send his son to save us. It's the same as during Moses' time. So if you look to Jesus with faith and believe, he will save you. If, and you will get eternal life. And here on earth, you'll also get a life of peace and satisfaction. And I think that our whining and complaining will come, it comes out of fear. And we know God blesses us every day, we know that. But fear is very strong. And we don't know if we have enough money for next month or if we're going to get enough food for this month or, you know, like the Nepal community, they don't know if they're going to have food tomorrow, our friends here. So we don't know if our children are going to be paid good out in the world. We don't know if our children will keep their faith or change their faith. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. And if you obsess on that, on that fear, you know, maybe your marriage, you don't know if your marriage is going to be successful, or you don't know if you're going to have money for college, or how to get into college. I mean, there's a long, long list of fears that we have, that we face every single day. Maybe we're not, you know, in the best health, and that's scary. Maybe you're, you know, you can stay stuck in those fears, but if you stay stuck, you will cry and complain, and it will be hard to come out of the fear to look to Jesus Christ. But if you look at him and watch and believe, you will be okay. God loves you. He protects you. He cares about you. You have to do your part which is to not stay stuck in fear and to whine and complain, but to get out of that fear and focus on God, to watch the cross, and to know and believe that you will be okay. You will be okay. So let's pray. And then I want to invite you for the Lord's table. And everyone who believes in Jesus Christ is welcome. And if it's children.